Hey, so fun note before this video begins, I recorded it all using the live recorder uh, through XSplit and some through OBS in order to you know, record me getting into live split since I hadn't used it yet. Uh, but a fun fact is I messed up and my mic was unplugged the entire time. So no fault of, of the live broadcaster, just me being kind of dumb. So the footage all will be the, the first time, first experiencing, but me re-encapsulating what it felt like at the time and, and you know, some notes with hindsight being 2020 for me. So thank you for that and uh, enjoy the video. Hey there, McAllister here with Toasty DIY. Uh, today I'm taking a look at XSplit, the broadcasting service and kind of the digital online uh, presenter kind of tool. Uh, so if you're looking to be like a Twitch streamer or you're looking to just try and upgrade your kind of recording setup for whether you're playing video games or trying to be a teacher or classwork or things like that, uh, these tools can really help you out. There's some pretty cool ones in here. So up front, uh, they gave me a code for a year of service. So that way I can hop on here and try out all the premium functions. You see here, I've downloaded the, the broadcaster and uh, I did record audio at the time, but it kind of got messed up. So this is me going back over and kind of showing you a cool feature it has is that it lets you import from OBS. So if you actually had a setup that you want to bring from a prior, uh, recording software, you're welcome to go with it. Right now I am recording with OBS in order to show you the setup and then I will switch over into it. Uh, I just didn't want to cause any problems with the service since I was a first time user of it. It's pretty in depth. It actually lets you go through and, and control a lot of things that I couldn't do uh, with my OBS recorder or at least I'm not comfortable doing because it didn't really give me a format in which I felt I could properly test and tease and see what I could do with it. This one's is pretty good. I did have one issue here in the upfront, so you're gonna see me change like the lower third of uh, my little profile there. But one issue I did run into is you'll notice the camera in the background is a little stuttery. I wasn't really sure why this was at first, but because of the settings that let me go in and edit and really toy around with it, I was able to find out what was wrong. And uh, before I did that though, I decided I wanted to get kind of the orange look of the Toasty Bros as my little frame. So here's me piddling about with the settings in a poor form trying to fix it. And uh, in reality, I had it the first thing I tried and I, for some reason, went past it. So watch me struggle for a little bit before I start messing with that webcam. And here we are full screened out now and I'm gonna be looking at the webcam. And so it's having the stutter issue. I couldn't figure out exactly what it was and it turns out it was kind of an encoding issue. You had to pick what format you wanted it to do. And the default one it had picked for the next ago was not too great. So hopping in here and I'm looking through, I thought maybe gain was what it was. In reality, gain's probably the one slider that's not gonna do anything up front. It's gonna be obvious and I still hit apply uh, just in case, you know, just in case. So then I slip into the actual output settings and this is where I find it. I thought maybe the frame rate was dropped, it wasn't. And then I look through and change the mode and resolution and that's what's going to end up fixing my issue here you'll see i pick a small resolution at first to see if possibly it was the native resolution of the webcam was calling causing the issue but i was still able to take it back out to 1080 and it ended up fixing the issue so after finding the solution i go ahead and swap it back to a resolution that'll look better inside this frame and boom it's done after this little refresh and then i moved on to setting up the scenes which are in the bottom right of the screen you'll spot them and just needed to go over and tell it to take my logitech or my next ago once it was ready boom there it is you see matt walk around the background i was checking it out make sure it was working fine checking the other scenes you could always change those to be your socials if you were actually streaming but in my case i did a local recording which puts the same strain on it but i don't actually have to link up a steam key or anything like that a stream key excuse me so moving off the side it's time to play some games we started with uh, league of legends the least in across from me is zach uh, the, if you know the graphic designer here at toasty bros and he decided to happily stop his work and fight me in here and then to utterly, utterly destroy me here. You'll watch, I'm gonna get to see a gray screen pretty soon. He is a uh, more of a gamer than I. So walking away, I thought I got away, I, I jump and then he just chases me down like a dog and sends me back to the gray screen that I'm all too familiar with when I play against him. Trying to swap scenes, I closed out of the game too soon so I kinda went to a black screen, but fixed that, swapped over, enjoyed a little bit of sip of coffee before we jumped over to Splitgate. Hopping into Splitgate, this game's been kind of taken off recently, so we decided to give it a shot. Uh, once I get into the game, I'm gonna go ahead and check my settings, and I'm gonna make sure that they're all you know, pretty high. Everything's running native to what it, it did when I launched the game, which is epic. I didn't change any colorblind settings. I was trying to find the FPS counter, but then the game said, you know, start. So 
off I go running, trying to find out what game mode I'm in because I didn't pay attention. Found out it's shot and snipers, and Zach's right there across the way, and he's going to help me take out these guys in the very beginning. I think we end up winning this game in the end. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, but it all ran smoothly. It was very... It all ran pretty great overall. I ended up having the uh, broadcaster on my right screen so I could watch for dropped frames and things like that. But luckily for me, I didn't run into any. The only thing that I was really you know, dropping was my, my KD because I, I kept missing shots over shots. So luckily in most of these clips you'll see right as I'm in the middle of killing people, Zalo shows up, which is Zach, and, and wipes him out for me because I, uh, I, I sit in spots like that. He runs around like an absolute animal. And uh, I was pretty proud. I... I after this play, I was pretty sure I was beating him. And then I realized now watching this footage, every single kill I got said assist kill. Uh, that kind of hurts because I thought I was doing pretty good. Lastly, I moved over to their VCAM software. This is the one that lets you go through and, and really fine tune your camera. So I'm talking about fine tuning. If you noticed right before I switched to the key out function, it had a, a really nice bokeh effect. And that was a masking uh, clip that went over top of me that's being you know done while you're actually streaming, it's alive. You don't have to go through and actually set a green screen behind you. You can just click it and go. You can also set a scene behind you like you see now. I'm messing with the contrast and saturation, poking around with it, seeing if I can't get it to do something kind of funny. I find out that you can move it and offset it in case you wanted to do something like a little watermark in the bottom right, something like that. You'd always be welcome. You can move that freely around the scene to have it where you want. And so to test it out, I give uh, Minecraft a little bit of letterboxing on the top and the bottom and I go run around to test just how well it runs and I had no issues with the settings I was on. I didn't have to lower them, they just were default this way because I was playing Bed Wars with uh, the Toasty Boys for the stream so I always keep the settings low just in case, you know, gotta keep those gamer frame. So. I didn't mess with a lot of the products outside the main suite of the, the VCAM and Broadcaster. They do have the option where you can connect, uh, you know, it says connect to webcam, but it means you're allowed to get a phone synced up. So for us, we did an office tour once and it would have been nice to be able to walk around and have an actual good feed to do that from. When you try to do it as like an NDI source, it can get a little wonky. Uh, but the other one, the presenter, I, not a big thing for me. It might be for Matt and Jackson who do more, you know, ad calls and have to go through media decks and talk about it. It could have a good benefit for them, but it's not really my cup of tea. I have similar feelings for the, the capture software they have. For for me, I don't really need it as most of my editing's done in person as I, I do all the editing for Toasty Bros. And with that being said, I'm, I'm next to them at all times. They can come over here and look at my work and check it. I don't have the need, but I'm not in a remote office. If I was, that might be a lot more useful for me than starting up a live stream and sending it to them every time that I want to have them look and go over something with me. So if I were to make a recommendation based off my experience, the, the biggest thing for me was really that V cam. That ability to control your camera to such a fine degree was awesome. I, I really enjoyed that. The broadcasting, uh, it's awesome. The thing is super customizable, but uh, it's really a personal choice at that point what software you want to use.